what would you say the modern menopause journey looks like? Um, and how is it different from the stereotypes that we hear about? Yeah, so I think it's really good if we can sort of phrase it in those uh, three myths that we understand about menopause. And this really goes back to how menopause has been represented in our um you know, dare I say it, Western patriarchal society. Um, you know, the first myth is that menopause is only for old women or, menop you know, menopause, you know, is for women 50 plus. That that concept, that image of, if I say the word, you know, think in your mind, the image of a menopausal woman, what comes to you? And usually it's an older woman, a gray-haired woman, you know, that is how menopause um, was always portrayed. Um, and today it's really not. Today, when we think of women in their 50s, 60s, 70s, we have images from movies and TV and politics and the business world where these are strong, independent, thoughtful women who are, they may have gray hair, but they are doing amazing things and they are active. And um, that really is the image that we have today. And it's becoming you know, it, it takes a long time to peel away the layers of um, very deep set language. And menopause is very deep set language. And that image of that, you know, menopause is only for old women concept still really, really hangs there, but it is changing. And there are, as more and more um, women are talking about menopause, as we see more and more women in leadership roles, as we see more and more older women represented on the screen um, in arts and entertainment and culture, um, that, that those images now are what we imagine. You know, a 70-year-old woman, I, I always use the example of um, Ariana Huffington, mm -hmm. who is, um, you know, the, the founder of the Huffington Post, and she her um, 70s and 80s. Even Jane Fonda now is well into her 80s. And if anyone saw the TV, which is really, you know, that busting, that older woman myth. Um, and more and more of that is happening. So that's great. So I think that really is the transition that we're seeing. And that first myth of menopause is only for old women. Um, is really being um, eroded. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That, that's a very good point. Um, so since you went through that first myth, do you want to go through the other two before we move on? Yes, yeah, sure. Um, so the second myth after menopause is only for old women is sort of related, is that menopause is the beginning of the end. And that relates to that bell-shaped curve, that anything good in your life you know, happens until you reach midlife. And then it's sort of like, you know, everything just sort of gets harder, everything fades away, our bodies, you know, aren't working the way that we want. And that image that, you know, that menopause really is the beginning of the end. And that also relates to the way that um, opportunities were available for women, you know, 70 years ago, a woman 70 years ago, who was going through menopause, um, had less opportunities, like things were beginning to change in the 60s and the 70s, things were changing, but really anything before 1960, which I know seems like 100 years ago, but really wasn't that far um, long ago, um, medical health opportunities, economic opportunities, social opportunities, business opportunities, there weren't really, um, they weren't so available for women. So yeah, so for a woman, you know, in her 60s, there wasn't very much for her to really do to achieve. She achieved her role in life, which was probably to have children, to be, uh, you know, to raise a family, which is, a, you know, super important value. As I said, I, I have five of my own children, not criticizing that, but it was what happened afterwards that was the question. And really there wasn't very much available. Today, it's not like that. Midlife is not the beginning of the end. Midlife is just part of your life cycle. And when we understand perimenopause and menopause in the context of a woman's life cycle, it's just one stage of it. Um, we have our puberty years, we have our reproductive years, we have perimenopause years, we have menopause, and then we have postmenopause. And this is just this long stage of life. And postmenopause can last, you know, 40 years. Mm -hmm. So it's we've got to start really assessing and we hear so many older women talk about today how life 
um, the opportunities and the excitement and the things that they can do are so much more increased in their 60s and 70s. They have more freedom, they have more confidence, they have more wisdom, they have more ability. People, they're not, um, they don't, they care less about what people say and think and they're not restricted or confined. So it does seem that post-menopause years actually hold many, many more opportunities in many different ways. So I think, you know, reframing that conversation really helps us to bust that second myth that, you know, menopause is the beginning of the end. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so glad you touched on that, because that is so such a common stereotype. And um, absolutely. And yeah, we have we can have obviously amazing, amazing long lifespans these days. Um, and so much exactly like you said, you could be postmenopausal for 40 years living an amazing life and, and exploring so many different things. So um, I love that. How about myth number three? Yeah, so this hopefully touches or will begin the conversation that we will have for the rest of um, our time together um, is about um, menopause means suffering. And this relates to the way that we talk about menopause in terms of symptoms, in terms of it being a disease, a hormonal deficiency. We have the image that menopause is all about the symptoms, the suffering, the hot flushes, the night sweats, the mood swings. And yes, they are very real. And we all know that they are very real. Um, the long list of different ways that women experience their menopause um, journey. But when we really frame and couch menopause in that suffering symptom language, it doesn't really give us the opportunity to explore what menopause really is. It doesn't give us the opportunity to find ways to manage and navigate and treat our symptoms. It doesn't allow us to explore menopause as maybe an empowering time, as a way to really assess what's going on in our bodies. And um, understanding menopause just in that very stereotypical disease um, couched language of symptoms and suffer and struggle and confusion and lack of clear information and lack of treatment options really keeps sort of reinforces those other two myths that we talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so that allows us to lead on to, yes, having an honest conversation about the symptoms and women's experiences and then looking at what could it be if we had that knowledge and information. So I don't believe that menopause needs to be a struggle and um, suffering. That is, though, how many women experience it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another such a great point, because that is one thing that's coming up a lot in, in talking with people in this series. Avaya has changed my life. Avaya has made me the woman I am today. Avaya is my home. Avaya is personal freedom. Avaya is the reason my life continuously improves. Let everyone in your life know about Avaya. Everyone needs to know about this amazing company. Thank you, Avaya, for appearing in my inbox. What Ike Allen and Andy Anderson have created at Avaya is what the world needs. 